wants to just put a chemical on their hair for no reason, like for it not to show, for it not to have any kind of effect on their hair, for it to just be. So, giving your um, your box dye a boost will definitely get you closer to the color. It's actually on the box. That's what's worked for me. My hair is still on my head. I'm not a licensed optician or hair professional, so please don't come for me. This is what works for me. So. You know, proceed with caution. Hey guys, I'm coming to you completely on mom mode right now. Um, I didn't sync my kids' nap at the same time, so I think one's going to wake up before the other. So I feel like I have to hurry up and do this video before the baby wakes up. I've been seeing a lot of videos on lock coloring, lock dyeing, and... Most of them have like the tagline, like fail, fail, fail. I think we can have success with coloring our own hair at home. So I just wanna give you some of the tips and tricks that have worked for me over the last couple of um, years. Like I'm drawing my experience from me being a loose natural and then being locked. The first things, of course, that you will need is your box dye. Okay. I just had an extra one of these laying around. I never ended up going this light with my hair, but I just wanted to try it and then I got like scared, so I chickened out, but I still ended up keeping the box. So this is probably, yeah, this is a very old box, especially with locks. If you think that you need just one or two boxes, honey, go in and get like four or five. Like you can never have too much box dye short to medium hair it depends on your thickness as well um, of your locks and of your hair and the density you just never know so it's better to have more boxes of dye than not enough um, some small rubber bands uh, of course some gloves Vaseline for your edges and your perimeter and my secret weapon is volume 30 developer you can get this at your beauty supply store sally's wherever 30 volume developer the number matters this handy dandy tool will definitely need it a little later in the in the process so keep this in mind too personally i found that my favorite um box dye of choice is actually garnier nutrice um, this is tried and true for me. I have never had any issues in terms of the color not taking or um, just terrible breakage or anything like that with this particular color. I've tried Dark and Lovely. I've tried Cream of Nature. Um, I've done Revlon. This was in my like natural hair days, but this one has been tried and true for me. So take that for what it is, but this brand has definitely been my faithful and go-to brand. We're not going to use that box for this demonstration. I'm just going to whip out um, this particular box. Okay. So, of course, when you have your dye, you have the normal cream developer. There's a conditioner that comes with it, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then the fade-resistant rich hair color. Okay. So it comes with the instructions and the gloves. I never use the gloves in here. Um, I tend to go with my latex glove or vinyl gloves specifically that doesn't have like the powder in it. So I'm just gonna go through the process. Guys, I'm not really dyeing my hair. Trust me, this is what I do every single time. I've dyed it and I've had nothing but success with my dyeing process, and that's all I want for you guys as well. So, as you can see, uh, I might try to turn up the color on here, but um, you guys might not even be able to see. My color is the same from root to tip. Like, there's no blotchiness, there's no, um, I call them leopard locks, okay? When you have that like black and brown, then whatever color, and it's just not consistent all the way through. As you can see, all of my color is consistent all the way through. Like there's no splotchiness at all. There, I do have like a gradient effect, but 
yeah there's just no like really dark spots and then really light spots on my locks so now that you've prepared like you've gotten at least your color out of your, your box what you're gonna do is section your sections sectioning your hair in fours is is okay when you have loose natural hair this is where you know the little rubber bands come in so I'm not gonna do this in any specific rhyme or reason. I prefer to get as close to the base, but not at the base. So I would say like an inch, an inch and a half, almost two inches maybe. Um, and you're gonna section your sections. So out of that one quadrant, I've made four sections. So I, I think that's a good number. But it also depends on the number of locks you have. So I've made four sections out of four. I mean, this is just, to me, a foolproof way, guys, of just making sure that your color is bomb section your sections well you might not know this but another tip that i have is to be mindful of how your hair processes for me i've noticed that the back of my hair takes a longer time to process than the front so i always start at the back of my hair and then i move forward i know sometimes it's easier to start from the front because that's what we can see but you need to figure out what areas of your hair process faster than others and you can do a strand test for that or if you just know that hey the back of my hair every time i get it dyed the back is always so much darker than the front um, i would definitely make sure that you know that beforehand so you know where to start i didn't do that to the back guys but you know i'm just gonna do a pseudo sectioning at the back just so it looks like and I'm not I know you guys hear that oh, this is this is the time he decides to bark okay anyway so I hope oh yeah you should be able to see that guys yeah but you would section these so make these into four add the color And, I mean, I can go on and on about this particular thing and why I do this, but the box color is set out to make you fail. I just want to put that out there. They sell you a false dream. If you think you're going to get this color, honey, save your coins. You ain't getting this color. But there is a way to come close to this color. And, yeah, it's my secret weapon. Do it all the time and my hair has been falling out using 30 volume developer i would say anywhere between 30 and 40 volume developer is ideal 50 to 60 i i guess it's okay but more than 60 honey i think you want your hair to fall out but i think 30 is just a safe number ready but i take what i have so far and i add two to three capfuls of this 30 developer into the dye. This gives your color a boost. It gives it help. The developer that comes in these box dyes are like nothing. I feel like it does very minimal for especially ethnic hair. Highly melanated hair. So we're shaking that up, blah, blah, blah. Before you start your color, definitely apply some Vaseline to your edges, the parameter of your, your hair, the back of your neck. Um, definitely make sure you spread your area with something that you're willing to get dirty or a shirt that you're willing to get dirty. Okay, guys, I'm not going to pop the top on this because, as I said, this is for demonstration purposes only. So after 
You would pop the top on it though. You pop the top and then you would go through each section. Saturate your sections, guys. Squeeze the color in. Go through, saturate, saturate, saturate. As I said, I wouldn't start at the front. I would start at the back for mine. But, you know, you do what works for you. Saturate, saturate, saturate. Okay. After you've done that, like all the ends of your hair are saturated, you're going to take this tool right here. This is so handy dandy, guys. And you're just going to pop. You're going to pop and pop because what happens is you're just going to pop all of your rubber bands off. Okay. I don't, because imagine your, your hair would be soaking, soaked with the dye and you don't want to like pull that through um, and squeeze it more than it needs to. So that's why I use this tool to kind of pop those rubber bands. And also this is very useful, like for twist outs or braid outs, just getting, or, or lock knots, just getting those rubber bands out quickly without like prying and spending a lot of time or just popping them. Like this just does it really quickly. So just imagine all my hair is, you know, whatever. And then that's when I go in with the color on my roots. And if you have a retwist, you're going to want to like unretwist your hair. You'll do this prior. Sorry guys. You would do this prior, unretwist your hair, and then make sure that you're just getting those roots, you know? And it's okay, you could probably keep those rubber bands in and do each root by root section, but I kind of don't. I just make sure that my ends are really saturated well, and then after that, um, I go in to the roots and add the color. Okay, so after you've gone through your roots, and then all the color you are going to put on plastic cap i feel like it helps the color to penetrate it generates more heat speeds up processing time all of that these box dyes say 25 to 35 minutes that's a lie. If you really want your color to actually look like color, you're going to want to keep that on. Like after you finish, af after you finished the ends and then your roots, that's when you start the clock. That's what's worked for me. My hair is still on my head. I'm not a licensed lactician or hair professional, so please don't come for me. But yes, I keep this on 45 minutes. Sometimes an hour. That's when I'm really pushing it. But you're gonna be checking your hair, okay, periodically. You're not just gonna like go cook a meal and then, you know, look at your hair. You're gonna kind of like be checking your hair maybe every 10, every 15 minutes um, of that 45 minute time to make sure that your color is actually, actually processing and actually taking. So after you've um, you know, taking your shower cap on and you feel like, okay, you can actually see the color and it's actually, you know, you're satisfied with what you're seeing while the dye is on, you need to be satisfied with what you're seeing. If you're not satisfied, you may need to process just a little bit longer. But if you're satisfied with how your roots and how your ends look, at that point is when you'll go and start your wash, wash out process. I would definitely recommend going under the water first and just letting the water run, run, run over your dye. And get as much as it much of it out as possible. After you've gone under the water, this is what you need to stop the chemical process. So clutch, okay? This lets you know if there is still color in your hair and where specifically it is and what spots you need to pay attention to to keep adding shampoo and just washing that thing out so that your hair does not get over processed um, so this helps you have a successful coloring session with your locks
people want a new look for the new year and a lot of times we lean towards getting color so i kind of wanted to do this video before the new year hits so if you if you're thinking about it you know go ahead going to a professional is ideal but i've also gone to professionals and been so unhappy with my color job so i did start doing my own color when i was a loose natural and i've had much more success with coloring my own hair at home than going to a salon if you feel more comfortable doing this process at a salon by all means do so but i just want to give you back some power and let you know that it also can be done at home thanks for watching guys i hope that this was helpful thank god the baby did not wake up during this recording but yeah anyway i'll see you guys in the next one bye